What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today we've got a big day, one of my favorite times of the year. I get to just show off gear and talk about ham radios that I like and other fun things. And yeah, we're going to be including stuff that's not ham radio related, but I think, I think, got a nice little Venn diagram overlap of stuff that hams like. Not necessarily ham radio. We'll be talking about some tools, some other fun stuff. So stay tuned. Enjoy the memes as we kick things off. All right. Hello, everybody. How's it going? I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. We are vastly wrapping up the year here, and I am sure if you're much like I am that sometimes, you know, the, the gifts that you get, you, nobody really understands you sometimes. All us sometimes eccentric ham radio operators. So I'm going to be talking about things that I really enjoy, and then you maybe you can just point them to this video, or you know, take the little copy uh, where the timestamp is, and and you can forward them right to uh, to the stuff that you really like, or maybe some new stuff. Now I will say some of the things obviously will have came out this year. Some things are older this year. Some are like really old, and then some are just straight up unobtainium, which I apologize. There's already one of those things that you probably saw in the thumbnail that is extremely difficult to uh, to get. So just keep that in mind. Mm. All right. Let's see. Oh, hey, thank you, Nathan, for telling everybody to go check out the podcast, the Ham Radio Crash Course podcast that I do with my wife every month, or sorry, every week. We talked about basically the connection of radios, like handheld radios, to packet TNCs and also just, you know, direct line connection for doing things like email and other stuff, you know. So, yeah, hopefully everybody hears me all right. What happened to the audio? There's no audio? Tell me if I'm okay. Can you hear me all right? You hear me? Audio's okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Don't don't mess with me and make me think that my audio is bad. <laughs> all right. So I don't really have the, the most fantastic way to kick this all off other than just, like, turn the fire hose on and aim it at you. So this is... Uh... <laughs> he saw it. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> Noah saw it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to be in here. All right, guys, let's turn on the fire hose and aim it right at you. But first, you know, the things you got to have for your Christmas time. Leia has made a whole bunch of new designs over at the Ham Radio Crash Course, hamtactical.com. She told me that the uh, the FT8 bag is selling like hotcakes. Uh Who would have who would have thunk it? You can put all your little antennas in there, your half wave um and fed half waves, your mic cables, all that stuff fits in there perfectly and throw an HT or two in there as well. We got a couple of ornaments for commemorating when you got your technician extra or general, as well as uh, obviously my favorite design, the uh, resonate radiate propagate for everybody that lives in one of those type of homes. You know who you are. An FT8 stocking and then a number of uh, ugly Santa or ugly Christmas sweaters like Willet Antenna and... May the bands, may your bands be merry and open, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're so inclined, go to hamtactical.com. All right. I got to start things off on, a, on on somewhat of a sad note. Obviously, one of the, I think, the, the biggest things for me that came out this year was the discovery of the Evolve 3 Maestro ebook, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's just, it, was a, it was a dirt cheap laptop. I paid $60 for it. Uh, picked it up at Micro Center, got it home, and said what the heck let's just plug a bio no battery into this thing and sure enough it charges off of 12 volts i know mike's in the yeah my <laughs> knmrds are there right now going oh my god look how much money that thing is now so it was a big find because just unifying all your station your portable station in particular to just 12 volts makes it a lot less stuff that you got to drag into the field so I'm giving it a shout out because it, it needs to be mentioned as one of my favorite things. They are incredibly difficult to find. I don't believe you can get them at Micro Center anymore. If you can, uh, send me a message. 
However, however, this is a challenge to everybody during this holiday season as you're looking for potential laptops, um, upgrading family members, whatever. If you happen to find a laptop that will run off of 12 volts, and I mean you take a battery and you go into the battery charge port and the thing charges, and I mean 12 volts to like 13.8, send me a message. I want to hear about it especially if it's under $200. It, it, it needs to be budget-friendly. Uh, yeah, indeed, Don, I, I, I know that there are 12-volt alternatives, and that's kind of what this call to action is. So if you guys find a good one, let me know. It needs to be Windows. Obviously, if it's uh, Linux-friendly, that's appreciated too. So there's where I'll start things off. Now, uh, maintaining its position as, as my favorite amateur radio, and we're just going to start off at a high point. It's the ICOM IC705. This continues to be my favorite radio. It is, what, what can I say about it? All my portable activations have it, or it's in my pack, it's included. It does pretty much everything I want it to do, which makes it just kind of the perfect little partner along with my little adventures that I go on in radio, uh, going out in the field. Even if I'm tuning up an antenna or whatnot, I will always have the 705 in the bag. Because again, it's going to work for 2 meters through 70 centimeters and the HF bands, which is exactly what you want. It has a USB connection for connecting to a computer, but it will also do wireless because it has onboard wireless LAN capability and Bluetooth. And just like all the D-Star radios that are in the ICOM lineup, it has the same features where you can load repeaters onto it and it will cycle through them, scan through them based off of, you know, kind of where you're at, what you're up to. And it just... I don't know. What can I say? Everybody who is understands like portable ham radio has, has probably thought about getting a 705. And the only things that keep people away from buying it are generally its size because it is a larger radio. It's It's got a lot of, um, well, you know what? In fact, there's a whole reason why I got this overhead camera, right? So let's, let's dive right over to that. Nope. Just kick something. So the 705 is about, that's big. It's about yay big, right? When looking at it on the camera here. Um, I did upgrade to the bigger battery. This is the stock battery on mine. Haven't done anything else really to it. I don't see a reason for having the cage. I keep it in a hydration pouch that Condor makes. It's available on Amazon. And it, it just it just does what I need it to do. So that's why it's kind of always with me wherever I go. And it's usually um, makes me happy. Good, uh, good, good radio there. Now, I, I was going to give a mention to another radio. Um, and, and I have to because it, it appeared in videos, and I do really like it. But this is where we start getting into unobtainium territory. The Kenwood D74, discontinued, no longer available. And you can see those are two auctions. You see that auction there for $1,000, and then the one below it, also $1,000 for a Kenwood THD74. Completely ridiculous. Uh, that is $400 more than it sold for when it was new. So it's definitely holding its value, which tells you that it is desirable, incredibly desirable. But, but I have what I think is the my favorite handheld, my biggest surprise handheld of the year. And I didn't mention in the beginning, but the way I looked at this was either things that I absolutely love, like I, I, I wouldn't want to live without, like so 705 is my... That is the radio I'd pick if I could only have one radio. Um, then there are ones that were just complete surprises to me. Gear that I discovered this year that just took me completely by surprise and I feel are something I would be really confident in recommending to you. Nathan already got uh, where we're going with this one. Back to the overhead. It's the Yesu. The, the Yesu VX6 was definitely the surprise radio of the year. The fact that it's tri-band, it's submersible, the whole thing is basically the body is entirely made of metal. The battery is, for being small, the battery lasts a really long time. And I've just been completely just in, in love with it. If you take the D74 next to it, just for a size comparison alone, you can see how much smaller um, the Yesu is. And it's just a... It, it's it's a fantastic radio for for the price. It goes for about two hundred fifty dollars, which it's kind of that sweet spot I've been looking for for a really long time. I've been trying to find a radio that is a serious upgrade to the Baofeng. This does that no problem, but is also priced in a way you're not going to completely lose your mind if something happens to it. Two hundred fifty dollars is not bad. It's on the more expensive side, but I think it's justified in this case. 
So let's clear the space here because we got more stuff to go through. All right, sliding around. <laughs> so yeah, don't get the uh, don't get the D seventy four. Get the get the Yesu instead. And uh, sometimes the Amazon prices are a little high. There is an Amazon A store that I've linked in the description, which is an affiliate link. So if you do buy something on there, I get a cut of the action. But don't feel pressured to buy something like the VX six, uh, VX six R on through Amazon because I, I would rather you just you know save the money. Uh, oh, Blake, good question. What tri-band antenna do you recommend for it? Uh, what you saw in there was the Smiley telescoping antenna. And the reason for that is I generally keep the VX6R in a tiny bag. The tiny bag, I have to take the antenna off and I need it to be very, very small, but I still want it to be effective. So I went with the Smiley. Truth be told, I often just use the stock antenna on, on that radio. Stock antenna is not bad. By stock, I mean the rubber duck antenna that comes in the box. So thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. If you want to, I'm going to talk about antennas here in a second. We're going to talk about HD antennas for sure. So hang tight on that one. Actually, it's the next item. All right. I did a ton of in the field tests going to the park down the street using an SDR for tracking my signal strength. And there were two antennas that were the absolute winners in that space. And they were the the one that I ultimately think is is my favorite is the Smiley half wave two meter antenna this antenna was uh, just a very good performer one of the best next to the mfj long ranger which is this guy so the smiley and the long ranger are right next to each other here the long ranger is a longer antenna uh, <laughs> uh, but it it's not from my point of view not as portable the reason why i like the smile a little bit more is that it's got this flexible bend to it whereas i feel like the long ranger being all metal is just going to snap the connector off of your your radio now i don't advocate that you actually carry these like on your radio if it's on your backpack strap or whatever like that i feel you generally want to have these guys in your pack when you get to your location and then you deploy it if you're doing summits on the air potentially even parks on the air although not as much or aprs or wind link these are very good antennas, but I, I give the nod to the Smiley. Uh, I found my Smiley antennas at HRO, and I believe I am showing you the link to their website, which you can buy online. The thing to remember about the Smileys, I went with the one that has the SMA connection, but on the picture or on the website that I'm showing right now, I know for that's fact, actually a kind of a, um, an adapter connector. What they do is they'll have a little screwed connector on the bottom of these, and you can pick whichever, call it an adapter if you want, BNC, SMA, and then they've got a myriad of options. And in fact, let me let me show you what those options are. You can pick MX, PL259, SMA female, SMA female Motorola, female Vertex, SMA male, TNC, and BNC. So I generally recommend going with BNC on these guys, and I think they're... Um, I think they're really good. Now, as far as if you wanted to upgrade, again, these are antennas that you put in the pack. You deploy them when you get to your location. Don't walk around with them. Not my recommendation at all. I would uh, say if you want something that goes on your radio and just kind of lives there, I would go with uh, the Signal Stuff Signal Stick. Link is in the description. That is an affiliate code that I've had for a really long time. I've worked with Signal Stuff Signal Stick for a very long time. This is the glow in the dark one. And I almost always go with the BNC connection so that I can just get rid of my miracle baby here right take him off switch on to the kenwood and uh, i'm i'm set for being able to go into the field so love it that is my favorite as far as antenna that stays on the radio which is a really big thing from my point of view all right now, next item, let's see. I'm going to mention a radio that is not the best performer. Not the best performer at all, but I had a lot of fun with it this year. And if at a value point, it's something that I think you can play around with. You can do a lot to Adam, K6ARK, has already done a ton of like experimental stuff with this radio. He's already got a ton of videos on it. It's a 3D printer's dream if you're a fan of 3D printing. It is the true sdx and we interviewed the creators of this radio some uh, this year on the on the channel 
I highly recommend you check this out if you want a fun radio. Easy to use. Easy to build in a kit. And by kit, not like necessarily soldering a ton of components, through holes, anything like that. Mainly the most thing you're going to be doing is playing around with mounting the screen, the LEDs, the speaker, um, your connection points for the radio itself, and the toroids. You can buy this completed. It comes to about $130 if you buy it online. And I do have in the description in the video uh, where the link to go to the website on getting the recommendation of where to buy this radio. This radio is kind of unique in the amateur radio space because it's actually um, cre under Creative Commons license, which means any company, remanufacturer, whatnot, can take the design of this radio, make it as long and, and sell it at a profit as long as they maintain the specifications that DL2MAN has laid down and PE1 and NZ. So highly recommended. Again, not the best performer. I'd call it equivalent to like the Baofeng make it, it gives such connotations, but it is the it is one of the cheapest fully functioned functioning HF radios that you can get. It does single sideband, internal microphone, um, and CW and whatnot. And you can also connect it to a computer and you can do digital modes that way. So deserves a mention. All right. Next. All right. So for the next radio, and this is we're still staunchly in in amateur radio territory. Don't don't worry. We'll um we'll have fun with gadgets in a little bit. County Com reached out to me earlier this year and wanted me to take a look at their GP seven. I have uh, long since have carried shortwave radios. I've been using the C Crane Skywave for a real long time. It is a good radio. It does a ton of things. I still like them both, but as far as cool things that have come out this year, this GP7 is kind of the upgrade that we wanted from the previous model. It is all the things we wanted to see in a shortwave radio in this form factor with these features, these capabilities. It goes to USB-C now. It has rechargeable batteries. All those things, incredibly good, and it's actually usable for amateur radio operators. Sometimes what happens with um, shortwave radios in particular, if you just want to listen, they assume that you want to listen to the broadcast shortwave frequencies and bands. That's not always the case. In fact, most hams would um, would just rather it just be a kind of a, a ham radio receiver. And this radio is perfect for that because it has an an touchscreen capability for tapping in the frequency that you want, which makes jumping to the amateur radio bands incredibly easy. And so that for that reason, I, I definitely give that the nod um, for shortwave. I think, did I miss a super chat? I did from Len. Thank you so much, Len. Happy holidays, Josh. Thanks for the content. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Next. And I, I can talk about, um, I have a, a little baggie. In fact, I'll, yeah, I'll show it to you guys. Why not? You guys will like this. It's got a really cool patch on it. Boom! So there's my there's my bag that the the GP7 lives in. I find that patch hilarious. And I do have the glow in the dark skin on it to keep it safe, the bumper. But you can see just size wise, you can take the bumper off and it, it reduces the the width considerably. So pretty good. Oh, I mistakenly said USB C. It's it's USB micro. Yeah, that's a that's the only downside. That's the only downside of it that I see at this point. So all right. Moving right along. What is next? Ah, okay, good. All right, next on the list. Now we're gonna get into yep, we're getting into tools for ham radio. Yep, tools for ham radio. All right, you ready for this? Definitely uh, the Rig Expert Stick. This is the new one, the Stick 500. I haven't had this very long, so I'll be honest with you. I, I don't have a ton of trigger time with it. Um, but I have been using the Rig Expert Stick Pro since it came out. And um, I love them. I love them both. In, in fact, really the only difference between the two is the Stick Pro goes to higher frequencies, a bit higher. Um, and the the different displays and the colorway as well. To be honest, if it were for me, most of what I need the Stick 500 does. 
It has a cool yellow color. You can see it if you drop it on field day or whatever. The e-ink display is super readable in the field. In direct sunlight, it's not a problem. And the thing that always doesn't bother me that much about the Stick Pro, but it was always something that was kind of like, that's not the way I would have went, is that you need to use this uh, Type N to uh, SO239 connector. And the Stick 500, it just comes with the SO239, which I think is just the better way to go. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. If you are familiar with the 230, the blue stick, it's the same concept, basically. Charges off of USB-C. It has an internal battery, 18650 battery from what I remember. And then you can keep using the real rubber cap, which is what you want. So stick, 500 is a winner. The price difference is not very vast between the two. I believe it is $40 cheaper for the 500 over the Pro, and I have linked to, I believe, Giga, yeah, Gigaparts is the link for checking out the Stick 500. You can get your pre-order in because it's not available yet. And sorry for the glitching. I'm using a GoPro on this shot. Jason, thank you so much. Oh, hey, let me. Thank you so much for uh, becoming a member there. Appreciate it. And Dave, Merry Christmas, neighbor. <laughs> Thanks for the great content. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. All right. Yeah, I I am a, a I, I like the stick 232, but if you want to do 70 centimeters, then you, you got to basically go to the 500. Yeah, this thing's all bugging out. Step it. Step. Why is it doing that? It may be unhappy with me. No, it's charging. Should be fine. All right. What is next? Ah, uh, yeah. So quick note on that. It's $439 at Gigaparts for the Stick Pro. And this is back ordered, but I believe it's going to be about $400. I could be wrong. Now now I'm worried that I'm going to be misstating. So nobody get mad at me if I if I overstate or understate the price. Yeah, that that's I think that's what happened. It's it's screwing up my video because I didn't I didn't pay for GoPro subscription. What a dumb model for a camera. That's crazy. I don't even know that you can download updates for that thing. Uh, Gigaparts is not taking pre-orders on the 500. Oh, you're right. Good call. Good note. Oh, I thought you could. Oh, it's just a stock alert. I was too quick on the draw on that one. But keep an eye out. That's the best place to go. Um, well, one of the best places. They're all going to have it, I'm pretty sure. All right. Now, uh, in the realm of getting portable out with ham radio, having fun with all that stuff, I have a constant desire to decrease the stuff that I have to pack. Also, I like to reduce the waste that I, I have when I go out. And I had a recommendation. Two of the recommendations so far has been from K6ARK. The first one was he said, you know, take a look at the Long Ranger, which I think is a winner. Um, but I like the Smiley a little bit more. But if it wasn't for him saying, hey, go look at those half-wave antennas, I might not have found the Smiley. So I'll give a nod to him. But one that was completely because of K6ARK. These 9-volt uh, rechargeable USB-C batteries are awesome. Literally just a little port on the side. I, I think these are great, particularly if you're a mountain topper owner, someone who needs to use, provide lower than 13.8 voltage to your radio. This is the, the jam. These are, are really, really nice to use, and they're inexpensive. So they're on Amazon. You can check that out. I think they're pretty cool. Another thing that I learned about from George at Pactena and played heavily in my antenna building and all the stuff that I did this year is these little plastic keychain clip double S carabiners. These things are awesome because those little holes on the side, let's see if I can give you the, the side shot on it. Yeah. See those little ovals that are along the outer edge? Those you can feed the wire through, particularly for QRP radios. It's real easy. You feed the wire through that, and it'll hold the it'll hold the end in in place. And so you can basically treat it like an insulator. So it it acts as an insulator for getting something connected or up in a tree, and it's got that clip, which makes it really convenient for taking a radio in and out. You can use it for strain release, indeed, like Jody is mentioning in the chat. They're they're fantastic, and they're they're really cheap. Um, so I I bought like. Oh, they got, did I just see gold coyote? Oh man, I may have to get a different color of these. Um, they're, they're really cheap. You can buy them. I bought them in like bags of 12 
And and those are like, you know, what I take when I go into the field. There are uh, a couple of different options on Amazon. I just linked to one and highly recommend it. So that would be that's my recommendation there. Let's check in with the chat. By the way, if you want to ask me a question, just put the word question somewhere in your comment and uh, you can at me at the same time. So appreciate that. Hey, Don N5SKT, thank you so much. And he says, hope you, Leia, and the kids have a great holiday. Well, thank you. And a reminder, the show must go on. I know you want to all want to see me blow up some Christmas lights in antenna form, and I will be doing that. And the Saturday falls on Christmas Eve, so I will be live streaming on Christmas Eve. I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of things going on, but I'm still going to blow up some Christmas lights. So whether you're there or not, it's okay. It's YouTube. You can watch after the fact. But if you want to see it live, I will be. So... There you go. All right. Uh, next. So Leatherman, I had this on me pretty much every time I went out to do an antenna build or a portable operation, the Thomas, the Thomas Mountain hike or hike camping. I really, really like this multi-tool. Very expensive multi-tool. Really, really expensive multi-tool. I don't understand. What just? What did I say? You're blowing. Uh, you are blowing Pac-10 up. Those sell for two ninety nine each, and it's only twelve dollars for twenty. Oh, that's not my intention. If that was a bad link, just get them on Amazon, whichever the cheapest one is. I just grabbed one of the links and posted it. Uh, there's a when I build the Amazon store, it's not always easy to see the price, so I just thought it was the cheap one. Anyway, the S clips you can find them on Amazon for really cheap. Just buy them in bulk; they're a lot cheaper. Okay, so. The Leatherman tools, no, nobody needs an explanation of like why Leathermans are good. I think everybody gets it. That shouldn't be a big thing for anybody. But, but I haven't been a big Leatherman user because I use bit drivers. I use bits a lot, right? And that's one of the failing points of Leatherman. What you can do if you go on Google and you um, search for a Leatherman free bit driver, you can find something like this. And this was one of my big, huge, huge favorite things of the year. There's a guy who makes these 3D printed uh, sheaths here. And it's like a, it's almost like a nylon. Uh, I think it's one of those epoxy 3D print things that they build on. Anyway, so somebody will mention it in the chat. The bit, the bit pouch is just regular bits for Leathermans, right? Leathermans. Uh, but this is the, this is the key thing. If you take out two of the tools on this, which, by the way, it has some redundant tools, you can add a driver, and that's what this is. is it's a, it's a bit holder. So you've got a side bit holder right there, and then the slot, and the slot accepts the Leatherman uh, bit holder, which is this guy. And so there you go. Oop, almost. So now I have a bit driver, which I can use with the bits, and this is ratcheting as well, which is really, really handy. And this was a, a really, really awesome ad. And it's it's really cheap. I think this is like just uh, 15 or 20 bucks. He does make them, all made by this one guy. And uh, if you search for free P4 or, or Leatherman free bit driver, it'll come up. And it's it's literally just slides in like that. And you can use the little bit holders that come or that when you can buy the Leatherman. So solid score. This one was like a no-brainer. I actually wasn't going to go with this um, multi-tool. I was going to get a different one that had a bit driver capability a lot easier. But after I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, because the one hand open is nice. The magnets that are in this, you kind of just clip it open. It's almost like a butterfly knife for a Leatherman. Yeah, it's it was really cool that um, that it's ratcheted, really useful. So there is that. Very good, very good. All right. A standard, always a winner. Um, something that I've, I've used in multiple videos, obviously use it behind the scenes. Part of the toolkit that everybody should have, a power poles crimper. This will do the 15, the 30, and the 45 amp connectors. This is pretty much the, the best way to do power pulls. I have done a couple where I'll crimp it and then I'll hit it with solder. You generally don't need to, though, but if you want to, it's an extra little piece of, I don't know, a little piece of extra security. I find that I'm, I more often do that for the 15 ampers 
and the very small gauge wires uh, I will solder, but the 30 and 45s I, I don't. And it's a it's just a ratcheting crimping tool. So that's a that's a solid win. All right. Oh, <laughs> since we're talking about tools, uh, Matt, I don't know if they have a. There's not a the the kit that I linked is the is not a combo kit with with power poles. They may exist, but power poles are pretty cheap. I, I'm not. I wouldn't be that worried about that one. All right. Since we're talking about tools, last tool I'm going to mention. Let me turn off my rig experts so they don't drain the batteries out. Last tool I'm going to mention, and it, and it is a, it's kind of a flex, also a little bit unobtainium. The Linux, Linus Tech Tips screwdriver. Um, I have now used this more than any of my screwdrivers. I put, I installed like kitchen cabinets with it. I installed a dishwasher. I've worked on multiple like antenna setups in the backyard, a bunch of electronics, and this has been fantastic. It is actually incredibly that their their talking point is that the the ratcheting on this is it, it barely needs to turn to hit the next piece of a ratchet. So you you only you only need like just a little bit of space to get any kind of movement on the shaft. It, it's an, it's a really really nice um, screwdriver. Only downside I'll mention, and it is something to consider depending on how rough you are with tools. The bit holder, while really nice and magnetic and holding everything in, it comes with twelve bits. But these little arms that hold them in, I they're kind of fragile. I, I, I think I'm going to probably break one at some point. And then that bitch is going to have to live um, on the, on the screwdriver. Another good note on these is that the magnet on here is really, really strong. It, it is a really, really strong magnet. So I'm, I haven't yet pulled back and had the bit come out or anything like that. And it comes with an additional magnet bit, which has been pretty useful um, for picking up stuff that drops. Where is it? Yeah, this guy. So I think, yeah, I can, I can pick up a, a full-size butterfly knife with this without any problem, really. <laughs> it's pretty good. So that is uh, definitely on the list. I don't know how to get this one. I don't know if they're out of stock still, but yeah. All right. Take a break in the action here since we're rounding out to some of the, the wild ones that is probably... Not, well, we'll see. We'll see what you guys think. Taking questions. All right. This is from Rick. He says, don't you think US $80 for a screwdriver is a bit much? Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's not my favorite screwdriver. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like last year when I was talking about the, the Vera tool kit, right? The, the tool caddy. It's freaking awesome. Like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, yeah, it, it's very expensive. Actually, it's, it's $70. Slight correction, $70. Orange and black is obviously the way to go here. $70, once you, I guess, factor in shipping, then yeah, it's kind of expensive. It, it depends on what you want to do. Yeah, sure, you can buy, a, you can get a, a much cheaper ratcheting screwdriver. Eh, it's a bit much. It is. Um, good question from Dave W6CRT. Josh, what was the cell service like at Thomas? Not very good. Uh, there was points where we had like one or two bars, but we had to kind of like walk to an area, a clearing where you could like get, look down almost at where the signal is coming from. Uh, lethal 5670 question as I don't want to pester Yesu. What's the average response time as I bricked my FTM 400 XDR trying to do a firmware update? I missed a step. Ooh, well, one, I'm sorry. Um, press X in the, uh, in the chat for his FTM 400. I don't know because I've never had to call them, uh, for support or service in that, in that regard. So I am sorry for your loss though. Um, probably they won't respond on the weekend, but I think you can also call them. You can call their Cal. They're, they're headquartered in California. At least that's where their service area is. Let's press F, press X, press F. That works. Both. Um, you, you can catch up with them in Southern California. That's where they're located. So let's see what's next. Ah, a simple one. <laughs> I, 
for everybody that's setting up antennas at home, I really, really strongly recommend you go with something like Dacron polyester rope. They are, even though it's black, it's UV resistant and it has very little static or low, low stretch. So, or it is static. On the contrary of something like paracord, paracord is not good for holding up antennas, right? So wherever possible, get yourself some Dacron line. I have used it every year uh, that I've been a ham and putting up antennas, and it's never, it's never turned me the wrong way at all. They work surprisingly well for holding up years on end, holding up wire antennas. The only thing I've had to do is while they say low stretch, there is some stretch to it. I found that if you put an antenna up, you wait about four to six months, and then you go in and you know tighten them up a little bit, and then you're good. So you can you can uh, definitely you can definitely go um, that way as well. Question: Why not master ant cords? Because because I have master ant cord. I'm going to be using it as part of my Christmas light rig, uh, but that rig is going to be a permanent installation. I'm just going to take the Christmas lights down when I'm done. I, uh, I'll i let you know. I do have the Master Ant Cord. I'm happy to come back and let you know if I, I really like them. My feeling is that they're probably very good too, but Dacron is. Why not Det Cord? There's the real answer. Why not Det Cord? Well, that's what the Christmas lights will be in two weeks from now, so make sure you, uh, make sure you follow along for that. Okay. Let's, let's go back to the overhead here. Why not dead cord? I'll get to your questions in a second. Let's uh, let's keep going. We're almost uh, through it. All right, next item. <laughs> now this is purely unobtainium. You, there were uh, there were some available today. Uh, somebody in the chat got one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about on this one. I am going to make a video on the Flipper Zero explaining what it is because it is not for everyone. In fact, I believe it is not for most people. We've talked about it on a live stream. Um, since this came out, this is a Kickstarter that I paid for a long time ago. And I got so I got it early and I've had a lot of fun with it, but it is of limited use to to most folks. It charges off of USB-C. It connects to your computer really easily. It has a micro SD card for if you want to load scripts onto it. You can do that via micro SD. It has a couple of connections for iButton connectors. It has GPIO pins. And it has a series of radios in it. It has a RF blaster or RF um, transmitter receiver. And it works on 300 megahertz and up to 900 megahertz. This is the Flipper Zero. They're working on a Flipper 1, which will include Wi-Fi, is my understanding. Uh, and it also has an NFC chip. Uh, NFT? No, <laughs> NFT is a stupid NFC uh, chip. So you can scan like, car you can literally take like, your credit card and record the info on it, and you could save it on this. This is a replay device. Basically what it does is either via the SD card, things you load on it like scripts, or what it can hear, and it does have a frequency counter, it will record the signals it receives and then it will play them back on whatever frequency it supports to cover so it's kind of like a little hacker tool but the reason why it's like the reason why it kind of took off was because of this like dolphin <laughs> because it's like a tamagotchi that went to that went and got its double e went back to college and and came out with a with a desire to to hack things it's a really nicely integrated device. Super cool. Very difficult to get though. Um, so, if you wanna, if you wanna see something fun, I posted a, a short. I'll play it right now. I got in trouble for this. People were people were mad at me about this one. So let's let's <laughs> let's go check that out. So if anybody missed that, play one more time. <laughs> I also find that funny, but some people didn't. 
Uh, it is not like the Ponagachi. The Ponagachi is a Wi-Fi device, and that also does have a, a cute little thingy on there. I have a Ponagachi too myself. Um, it is. It doesn't go up to those frequencies, and the Flipper Zero has way more capabilities. In fact, we'll we'll dive in here a little bit. Uh, let me see. Let me give you the frequency range. So sub 1G uh, frequencies is what it covers, but really it starts at 300 megahertz is its starting point. It, it calls it a sub 1G antenna. It, it's not really for really advanced range, so that's no biggie. I will give you possibly one of my my favorite things about it is the uh, the IR blaster the ir receive capability it's not like a universal remote like you buy at best buy or whatever you have to you have to go in and, and program the buttons if it's a if it's a remote it doesn't know <laughs> but that transmitter for infrared is the most powerful remote i've ever owned like when the kids are screwing around and leia yells that she needs to we need they need to turn the tv off and do their homework i can be in my office and just through like a crack in the door i can see the tv like 30 feet away, click the button, it'll shut the TV off. You can use this to shut TVs off like anywhere. Like if you're walking around town and you see like a uh, a storefront that has a, a window, you can just program that or it may have it already pre-located or loaded in it and just boom, shut it off. They're, they're really, really cool uh, in that sense. It is $150, so it's not cheap. It's definitely a toy. It's not ham radio related at all, but it's really kind of fun uh, if you like to mess around with, you know, that kind of stuff. So just an FYI on that. Uh, let me double check the price. I said 150, sorry, 170. So you can, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evan just got his. So it's, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. He said, I may or may not done this like seven TVs at Walmart. Yeah. Reminder, if you want to talk about more, any of this stuff, if you want to go into greater detail, um, join us over on the discord. The link is pinned on the live chat or it's in the description as well. And we have a nice little chat for multiple hours, uh, long into the evening. Try to answer a lot of ham radio questions, but we'll also have some fun with things outside. Uh, question, how many Tesla charge doors have you opened? I... If you don't listen to the podcast, I talked about this last night with my wife when we recorded the podcast. I haven't opened a ton, but I live in Southern California, which is, you know, probably per capita the most Teslas on the planet, aside from China. I think China actually has, China's buying a ton of Teslas, regardless. Uh, like most places we go, like, like the Cub Scout meeting, I think there were like five Teslas in the parking lot of maybe like 30 cars which seems like a lot to me. That's a lot of Teslas. And yeah, I, I just hit the button when I'm in the middle of the parking lot and they all open. <laughs> Let's see. There's a couple of questions. I'll hit it up really quick. Uh, question. Oh, uh, FTM 300 or FTM 400 XDR screen size notwithstanding, would you still buy the 400 is starting over? I don't know. Screen size notwithstanding, I don't know. There's not much difference between them aside from the screen. So it's kind of like, you kind of have to include the screen, I, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I I would agree. So don't don't email Yesu. Call them. Um, they they they'll have people there during the week. Uh, great. Oh, this is a really good question. Have you tried Bankline? So anybody who doesn't know, Bankline is actually used for catfishing. You you make a Bankline run and bait it and throw it out in the water and just let it sit, and then catfish will run by and grab it, and you can fish up a ton of catfish with it. Um, I have not. I have not used Bankline. Bankline is really reliable. The, the question I have is how good is it over the years um, out holding up your antenna against UV getting blasted by the sun? Uh, question, can I link you to a thermal camera deal that seems like a no-brainer? The reviews seem great and a lot cheaper than the floor cameras with better specs. Uh, yes, you can. In fact, I've been looking at thermal cameras, so you you got me at the right time. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Discord if you're not, or you can email me. There should be. It's it's um, josh at hamtactical.com. All right, what else do we got? Let me see here. I do love that little flipper, though. That's a That's an EDC item, by the way. Oh, buddy. I am uh, definitely rocking that thing when I when I roll out the door. Okay, here is uh, what I think is possibly the coolest EDC item I picked up, and by EDC I mean like a pocket knife, a piece, a chapstick, you know, that whole thing. This is now taken over. I've always carried a flashlight. I've carried a flashlight for, I think, since I was a Boy Scout, the little mini mag light. This has taken over as my flashlight of choice. 
This is the Rovivon um, A8. They just came out with an update to this. This is the old model. This is the USB micro model. They have a USB-C model now, and I'm probably going to upgrade just to get it. This light is the coolest freaking light. Okay, so you double-click it, and there's your standard, you know, flashlight with a couple of different brightness levels. It's got like a reading mode, okay? Triple click. It's got a black light. So now you got black light capability. You're in a hotel room and you're like, did they uh, is, did they clean it good enough? Um, now you got a black light. Click it again. Red light for night vision. Flashing. Super fast fa flashing. And then back to the, the black light. Click it four times. Now you have a reading light, like a desk light. It, it is it is the coolest. I it is I, I absolutely love this thing. It is the um Rovi Vaughn. I'll I'll by the way, again, that's linked. It, you can get it off Amazon. I have the link um in the description. Rovi Vaughn, R-O-V-Y-V-O-N. All one word, Alpha 8. They make a couple of different models. Uh, but some of the models don't have all the extra LEDs on the side. Some of the models are all metal, which means obviously they can't have the, the LEDs on the side. This thing is, a, is an absolute no-brainer. If you know any flashlight nuts or anything like that, they will absolutely love this. If you yourself are a flashlight nut, this is just a straight-up no-brainer. I've never had that much capability in my pocket. That is like, it's uh, it's 46 bucks on Amazon for a flashlight. Great deal. Okay. Where are we going next? Dipping into, oh wait, there's the, there it is. Sorry, I should have showed you that earlier. Let's just go like that. That's it, Roe v. Vaughn. All right. Next. God, we got so much stuff to talk about, guys. <laughs> So if you're following me on, on Twitter, uh, I was asking the question of what is the crossover of people who are both ham radio aficionados and fountain pen users. And while I have some expensive fountain pens, there are people that are looking for EDCable fountain pens. And the one that I recommend and the one that I've really been liking for its price is the um, Caveco sport line of pens. This is the plastic one, and this is the all sport or the AL sport for aluminum. The all sport gets uh, muffed up pretty, pretty bad, gets scratched up pretty gnarly, but I kind of like that. It gives it a lot of character. Well, uh, fountain pens, I know I'm, I'm losing some of you on this one and that's okay. You don't have to like fountain pens, but this is uh, this is my video talking about what I liked in the year. I love fountain pens. I carry, that's what I use primarily, unless I'm writing on right in the rain pads. And so then I use pencils or um, like a space pen or whatnot. And I do have that in my ham radio, like portable operation kits. So this is definitely more like an EDC type item. They seal up really, really well. There's an O-ring inside this one. Uh, I have inked this guy up. This one doesn't get doesn't get used as much as the white one because this is like really light and EDCable. This got inked up probably five months ago and the ink is still dry or still still wet. And it started up immediately when I started writing with it. So not for everybody, but um I, I really enjoy them. What was a K6 yeah exactly that's the that's the um you carry a a quill and a pen knife. Did everybody know that's the origin of pen knife? It was a knife that you would carry to sharpen your quill. Who knew that? Give me a one in the chat if you knew that one. Um, Yeah, there, there's a lot of Twisbees I like. The Twisby, um, the vacuum one. I just got the Vac Mini. The Twisby Vac Mini is, is showing up so I can play around with that one. Uh, yes. So Jason Jenkins, I, I don't want to make this into a, a fountain pen chat, but get yourself a fountain pen syringe and just refill the, the ink cartridges. Just refill those. You get way more ink than a converter. And I much prefer that than getting ink all over myself, um, as I refill them. All righty. All righty. Now this is a upgraded item. This is the other thing. I talked about this on my 
my bug out, my ham radio bug out backpack kit. I talked about the Nikkor NU25 um, headlamp. This is still my favorite headlamp that I've owned because it's incredibly small and lightweight and easy to carry, but they just came out with a new model. And the new model is USB-C. Again, all these all these gadgets that I've been complaining about have been upgraded to USB-C, and I'm absolutely in love with the fact that they're doing that. Plus, this model actually goes up higher in lumens, which is good or bad. Frankly, I think a headlamp needs to last for a really, really long time. So it doesn't need to put out the most amount of light. It just needs to be very long-lasting. Um, so I give this the nod. That's the new one that I'm showing on the screen right now. And its brother right next to it is a combo pack with the um, charging brick. And I do have that. I've had this for a while as well. This is my EDC charging brick. Some of you EDC these. I don't know if you if you don't. That's okay. This is the lightest. What is this? 10,000 uh, 10, milliamp hour USB charge bank that you can carry um, or that is available. And it's from Nightcore, so it's pretty decent quality. It's carbon fiber. It's the lightest and smallest. And I I generally always have this with me in, in whatever bag I'm carrying. USB-C, USB-A. It's a fast charge as well off of USB-C. Slam dunk. An absolute slam dunk from my point of view. Man, we're going to... We may we may miss the, uh, the hour here. All right. I think now we're going to get into a little bit of my video making tools that, that I like. Yes. <laughs> okay. We're totally off the ham radio reservation. We've only got a couple more items, but these are the things that I used significantly in 2022 that made my video productions um, easier for me, which is what I look for more than anything. And I think fun. All of these are really, really fun. Something I picked up recently, and this is going to have a very small minority of people who, who are going to want to pick this up, but I got to mention it. Um, it is the Ricoh GR3X. This is a point and shoot. The video is horrible. I don't use it for video. It is a point and shoot camera, digital camera. The reason I have this is it has a 48 millimeter prime lens and it is a micro four thirds sensor. It is the best point and shoot camera that I will camera really for taking stills aside from dragging out my uh, my mirrorless cameras and taking shots this is the most like travel friendly unobtrusive camera that you can carry I use this for b-roll b-roll specifically like taking images of pictures this thing is an absolute just amazing amazing camera for taking stills if you don't care about stills you can ignore this size comparison is that against my phone there right what are you what did what did you say i think josh is i think josh is still very much a final yes josh is i am very much uh, okay so uh that i i assume has a smaller demographic of people who will find that interesting side item <laughs> not really video making i forgot this uh this was lingering on the side and, and got lost. This is the smallest right in the rain tablet I could find. <laughs> uh, I carry this with a, actually, I'll show this off at the end. This is my little EDC pouch that I carry with me, and I'll explain what the pouches are uh, as we get further along. Smallest right in the rain tablet. These are also available on Amazon. Perforated pages. Not many of them, but you could, I guess, in a in a, in a situation, do a log on that if you wanted to, particularly for like mm, CW or something. Fits in almost anything, can fit in your wallet. Really handy because it's right in the rain. I couple it with a space pen, which I'll show you in a little bit. So there's that out of the way. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to miss that because that's a, that's a, those, that's a true stocking stuffer. If you got somebody who's shown any interest in right in the rain, go get a pack of that. Go get a pack of that for yourself. All right. This, um, you saw, well, you didn't see this, but this was used heavily in all the times that I go to a ham fest. This is the DJI OM5. This is the mobile gimbal for cell phones, etc. And it is like, the, the world of, of gimbals has come a really, really long way. And DJI is probably the best at the cell phone gimbal market right now. Uh, it is also a selfie stick, 
So every time you saw me when I was walking around those shows and I stretched this out, uh, I was holding it up in the air like, you know, like this walking around. These work just fantastically. So highly recommend them. Um, I think I was walking around the show. I don't know what show it was. And I had this and then literally the next show, almost all the other YouTubers had it because it is that cool. Like everybody was rocking that. But that, that is, let's see. Yeah, the new model is out. I have the five. The The new model is only $10 more expensive than the five and it's, it's upgraded. So go with this. For everybody that's thinking about making videos, um, oh, I'll, I'll answer that question in a second. Somebody asked about this. For everybody that's interested in making videos and you have a phone, like an iPhone or an Android phone of any appreciable quality of audio, just get yourself a tripod and a phone mount. It, it could be this or just a tripod um, and start doing videos that way. You don't need very expensive cameras to get started on YouTube. In fact, I would encourage you to not go invest a bunch of money into something when you already have good enough in your pocket. Somebody asked, what's this on the back of mine? I didn't I, I didn't even think to mention this. This is a pop socket. It's a mag uh, connect. So it's it magnets on you. It's a hold. you hold it, right? It's a pop socket. But it's got a SOG bottle opener slash box opener slash hex bolt head on it. So SOG did a collab with pop socket. And so now you can have that. So there's what that is. I didn't expect to talk about that, but I'm glad somebody said something. All right. Did I say appreciable? Oh, no. And next, let's see, what do we got next? Ah, now this is when you, you want to uh, you wanna upgrade your game big time. So you're using the gimbal and you want the really, really good audio. This is very expensive for a mic pack. I would recommend you go with any of the, like some of the Chinese knockoffs that are on Amazon, probably before this one, even though this is Chinese too. But uh, DJI also has a mic pack set. This is the two microphone transmitter and receiver combo set. I think I have this set up for iPhone. I do. So basically what I do is take my iPhone and just plug the lightning cable into it. And I can monitor audio looking at the front of the camera while it's mounted to the gimbal. And I can shoot video with it. So let me let me pull this guy out. Yeah, so test, 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 test. These are, it, it just makes um, shooting video really, really easy. And you can throw this on uh, anybody. It doesn't have to clip. These are magnets throw it on their shirt like that and just start working. It's great. Works really, really well. So highly recommended on that. Extremely expensive though. Way more expensive than you, than you need. Um, I already mentioned this. I use this all the time. Portable, the Aruchi uh, mouse by Razer. The reason why I like this, it is Bluetooth. It has the little dongle for, what is that? 2.8 or 2.4? 2.4 gigahertz. And it uses one AA battery or one AAA battery. So it's agnostic in what uh, A or AA cells you use in it. Really lightweight, easy to uh, transport around. It has become my favorite portable mouse. Again, reminder, a lot of these links are in the description. But if you, are, um, if you just want to use it as a reference, that's fine. All right. Lastly, I think I have two more things. And then what do we got? Oh, we're almost done. And then we're going to go to the Discord. So I hope you join me over there. Lastly, this is purely just for funsies. And this is also something like the, the Rico. You're, you're, this is going to be a small set of people that are going to like this thing. This is a Dirty Wave Mate or Dirty Wave M8. This is a tracker. It is a music machine, if you will. It harkens back to when people were literally using like the Game Boy to make chiptune music. This, however, goes way beyond that. It, it takes MIDI in, which is like an audio source in. Uh, it can take samples. It is a sampler itself, meaning you can chop up songs or chop up audio. I use it for all those songs you've heard. When I run the streams over on Twitch and you hear like people fighting on the radio, this is what I've been working on mostly with. I still have a um, Teenage Engineering OP1, 
which I like, but this I can take everywhere with me, and it is awesome. And it plays right out of the... I have the volume set pretty low, so I don't know if you're hearing this, but I can't say enough about that, but again, that's not for everybody. And I think that's it. I'll talk about the pouch. Um, I did upgrade my camera, my main camera, to the Sony FX30, which I've really, really liked that. If you notice that my, my video is like a lot more crispy, that's this guy. That's the results of this guy. All this Thomas Mountain videos has all been shot on this camera. Um, it is a beast and it's awesome. So I don't expect, I don't expect people to go buy that either, but if you like making video and you don't mind micro four thirds or what they call super 35, um, the body is $1,800. I don't expect people to go buy that. Okay. My little pouch here, uh, EDC pouch. All these patches are called Ranger eyes. You can find a lot of them on Etsy, and you can see some of them here. Little Game Boy check engine light that says FML. I think that's hilarious. A pocket knife, the <laughs> upset <laughs> Tom uh, from Tom and Jerry. A flaming dumpster fire for 2021 and 2020. Inside, just more simple tools this is a swiss army knife micro champ swiss army knife fingernail clippers a whistle with that is dacron line i think a tiny adjustable uh, county com wrench what i view is probably one of the worst um multi-tools i have which is this gerber i just put it in there because why not i hate i don't like gerber multi-tools i especially don't like this thing and the space pen that I was going to mention is the extendable one. These are rarer. You don't see these as often. I don't like the space pens that you, you take them apart and you flip them around. This one, you pull the back and the pen tip comes out. So a little small, but, you know, if you got small hands like me, then it'll be okay. So it's an extendable. So you take this guy, and if you go in the front here... I've got my right in the rain. So that's the that's the writing setup. Now I, I still have a first aid pouch and all that other stuff, but uh and then next to that is a Meritac AAA flashlight, and largely because of the the little globe there. This is really nice little floodlight. You can use this in all kinds of situations, or you can take it off, and it's just a regular AAA light. And it glows! You know I love things that glow. And last but not least, everybody carries Bix, but I've been moving to... What are these? I don't remember. These are like pot heed um, lighters. They're refillable, so I've been... What are these guys? I don't remember what these are. Why did I forget that? A clipper. Uh, the reason I got it, though, is because it's got that Remington, I think that's a 20-gauge shell from the look of it. It's either 20-gauge or 410. They're refillable and from the bottom, and you can also replace the flint. So you're not just create, you know, taking Bix and throwing them in the trash when you're done. You can refill them. They're not as robust, I feel, as, um, as Bix, but... So, yeah. That is a whole lot of list of my favorite things. I will now take questions, a couple of questions, and then if you'd like, uh, join me over on the Discord and we can talk more about your favorite EDC items. So hopefully that was, uh, here, I'll, I'll put all my, my flex items on there for the year that I picked up. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the this guy's also kind of unobtainium. Of course it is. All right. No questions. Show more stuff. Well, thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate the super chats too. You guys taking the time uh, to support the channel is appreciated. Where's my beer? All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so N zero HR knows the pain. So if if anybody wants to know what I would drop 
in a heartbeat, that Gerber multi-tool for the Leatherman Squirt Electrician model. They don't make it anymore, and if you try and buy one on eBay, those things are through the roof. It is. Uh, it has the the wire strippers in the in the needle nose. They're impossible to find now. Way better, way better than the Gerber. Question: What's the tracker? That tracker is the um, Dirty Wave M8. Dirty Wave M8. Why am I so small? Why am I so small? There we go. Oh, Greg had one. Yes. Yeah, that was a fantastic multi-tool. Yeah, so uh, I hope Leia's not watching um, because this is like a whole bunch of stuff that I bought this year. And a lot of it was not cheap, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, Leatherman discontinues things people people love. So Jason, uh, what I plan to do is release a couple more tracks, and then I will put something on Bandcamp or something like that that you can download them all. I have made three, uh, so I need to make a couple more. And literally, here's the the here's the method behind the madness. When I'm tooling around HF, and I hear a bunch of people fighting with each other. I hit the record button on my 7610, and then I take that into my samplers, and I make a song out of it. So I will, um, for the after chat, I will play the song that's on this as it stands right now. It's not done, so you guys can hear it. And that is the dude that's on, who's the guy that's always on 14.313 megahertz? That guy, the Canadian who hates Americans. I have a bunch of clips of him. <laughs> I'm checking for questions that I missed. I apologize if I missed questions. Oh, um, what is the pouch? Okay, so this is the only bummer. This is one of the things I wasn't able... I didn't answer what the pouch was. The pouch is a... Uh, oh, gosh, what is the pouch? I could actually... Let me see if it's in there. Let me see if it's... Hold on, we're going to do this. alpaca it's an alpaca pouch i have a couple of their pouches they have seemed to have found me on instagram and won't let me go i have to explain what's going on with alpaca though um i yeah alpaca is basically from my point of view this is me they are finding people who are making highly sought after pouches edc pouches and they're straight up copying their designs and reselling them because the people that are making said highly sought after designs can't make enough to supply the demand. They're like very small companies making the kind of stuff. And um, the company that I have been trying to buy something from for so long, I'll show you right now, is Garage Built uh, Gear. So these this guy's um, pouches... Stop it. Siri, you've done that twice to me today. These guys, this guy's pouches are absolute unobtainium. And it's the mighty pouch with the loops. Uh, he, he, okay, you're going off, going off my wrist. He makes these, posts them on Instagram, and then they, they just disappear. They, they're just gone. You can't get them. And he makes them in all kinds of like, you know, one-off colorways they are like absolutely scalped all over the internet whenever they show up. Let me see if we've got some examples. There's really, really cool. Um, oh, good. Could you take a darker picture, bro? Yeah. So stuff like that. They've got little Velcro spots for ranger eyes. They do oiled leather, glow in the dark. That's like the zombie model. People be showing off their fidget tools. Uh, yeah, like there's just a whole variation of these really cool little pouches he makes. These are less of the wild ones. Where are the wild ones? Hold on. Uh, so he's got a couple of wild colors that are on there right now. Impossible to find. Impossible to find. But, uh, what else? Retired Firefighter is another one that makes really good stuff, but, um, Alpaca is not really copying him yet. 
Yeah, the, the problem is, is that the pouches are, it's just like one guy or a couple of people making them. And the designs take off and Alpaca goes, well, I've got a, you know, a factory in China. We'll just mass produce everything that people want. And, you know, we'll, we'll run them out that way because they're not able to, uh, to hit, to meet demand. So if you want to, what I would recommend is you go to Garage Built Gear on Instagram, follow them, and they post, they make posts and stories that tell when there is going to be a drop. So let me, let me just give you a, a, an understanding. Um, when he posts the stock to the website, the website will either crash or they'll be gone instantly. It's like, uh, remember Woot.com and the, the bag of crap or the bushel of carrots or the blinged out cabbage? Those things, they're gone like that. They're instantly gone. They're in insanely difficult to get. I will pull up one more link since uh, Jason asked so nicely. Recycled firefighter. This one's cool. I stumbled on this guy years ago. So check this out. Okay. This is, this is, if, if you've never seen this, then this, this might actually be pretty cool. He takes fire hoses that are retired, retired fire hoses and makes them into bags and little, you know, uh, wallets and stuff like that. So I was rocking this, um, little billfold wallet for a really long time. It's called the Sergeant. And what's cool about them. Um, I don't know if he does this anymore, but he used to, let me find an example. Yeah, there you go. He used to, or you could ask to get ones that have the printing on like the actual stained in ink printing that was on the fire hose, like get some of it on the, the wallet. Uh, yeah, really, really cool. Let me get out of here. Come on. Uh, let me find. So that's all you got right now. Come on, man. This is another guy. He, he's like hand making this stuff. So he sells out like he's got a couple. He's got a pouch that sold out. It's called the Trucky. Um, where's I have the field notes fold that has a pen slot. And I, that's where I put the the Caveco Sport, All Sport. Oh, he doesn't even have it listed anymore. Hmm. I'll show the backpacks in a second, and we'll wrap things up here. Where is it? Oh, you can't even get it anymore. Okay. I've got, oh no, this is it. Okay. The rugged coverall. Uh, you can put field notes uh, tablets in it, and you can use it for note taking. It takes a Space pen, the longer ones, really good stuff. In fact, that's the exact color I have is the orange. Yeah, so you can you can get a multicam black and pen with field notes, uh, but those are sold out as well. So, yeah, sorry, I, a lot of the stuff that I'm mentioning is super super hard to get, or they sell out really quickly because it's good stuff, really good stuff. Um, you know what? It was. This was last year's, but I will say I'm still carrying it. It's it's lovingly beat to all get out. Uh, this is my tactical keychain utility knife. It uses magnets um, to slide the blade in and out. And I have definitely, these are also hard to get, <laughs> but that was one of my favorite things from last year. So shout out to Tactical Keychains. They deserve uh, you checking them out too. So yeah. All right. I think that'll that'll wrap things up. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Wow, over 500 people. Thanks so much. Next week, next week is not a ham radio video. It's not a ham radio live stream. But I can tell you, we will definitely be getting down. Okay? So for those of you that know, now you know. Uh, yes, the blades are the standard utility blade. In fact, I just use the Irwin ones most likely, uh, most often. All right. Okay, cool. Well, I hope you decide to join us over on the Discord. We'll obviously answer all your ham radio questions that we can. We've got a ton of people, usually 50 to 70 or so people in the chat. It is a voice chat, so you can ask questions via your voice, or you can just use your text, typey, 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 and we'll do our best to answer it. I will be live streaming on YouTube. I'm going to end this stream and start a new one. And I'll also be streaming on uh, Twitch. So make sure you check me out at Hammerio Crash Course. All right, everybody. Big shout out to the patrons for 
letting me do things like uh, buy this stuff and test it and make videos and do all that fun stuff. Uh, so hopefully you found this valuable and useful and my information is good <laughs> for you to make solid purchasing decisions for your everyday use items. I have, uh, God, how long? Ever since I was a Boy Scout, I've carried a pocket knife and carried some level of um, EDC, right? It's always a pocket knife. Now it's two with the tactical keychains. I carry that and a pocket knife. Oh, in case anybody wants to know, it is the Benchmade Bug Out. It's the Bug Out, right? I think it is. It's either the Bug Out or EDC, either way. So, um, always a knife, always chapstick, always a flashlight. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. <coughs> so thank you to the patrons uh, for the support to the channel. Got a number of patron levels for different types of perks. The last perk, the last level perk, you get to vote on what I do for the first of the month live stream. We call that patron picks. And uh, there's a sticker. I send you a sticker. And then everybody gets access to my newsletter. I only post my newsletter on Patreon. And I pre-post all my videos over there. I have something special I'm going to be doing uh, hopefully this month. I'll get them all done. But um, if you get it next month, just say, hey, it's a belated Christmas gift or, or holiday gift from Josh. Okay? <laughs> all right. All right, everybody. I'm going to head out. I'm going to go to the Discord in a little bit. And I'll talk to you later. All right? 73. Enjoy. The memes. What do you use to video editor? Um, my standard short form videos are all done in Final Cut Pro. And doing these live streams, I use OBS. Oscar Bravo Sierra. All right, catch ya on the other side.